in part one, we have been introduced to the main characters. Mr. Robert Quick, a 52-year-old father of Kate and Jenny, had just arrived home from a long business trip. Remember, he was so eager to meet his daughters that he immediately rushed out to meet them in the garden. But, to his disappointment, neither of the two girls acknowledged him. They did not bother that their father had returned home. So um, he got his chair, took his newspaper, and began to read. Okay, that is where we stopped in part one. Now let's see what happens next. Jenny had got up and wandered away among the trees. Her legs too were bare and dirty, and her dress had a large green stain at the side. She had been in the pond. Okay, so Jenny, who was reading a book, now had got up and was wandering among the trees. She did not have any shoes on, her legs were dirty, and her dress had a large green stain at the side as she was sleeping or lying down next to the pond. And now Kate allowed herself to collapse slowly out of the swing and lay on her back with her hair tousled in the dirt, her arms thrown apart, her small, dirty hands with black nails turned palm upwards to the sky. Now Kate also came down from the swing. Now she relaxes on the grass and raises her hand up to the sky, admiring her little fingers. Her cocker bitch snort came looping and sniffing, uttered one short bark and rooted at her mistress's legs. Kate raised one foot and tickled her stomach, then rolled over and buried her face in her arms. When Snort tried to push her nose under Kate's thigh as if to turn her over, she made a half kick and murmured, Go away, Snort. As Kate and Jenny were lying on the grass, suddenly their dog Snort came looping and sniffing. And then, after one short bark, Snort began licking Kate's leg. Kate then raised one foot and used it to tickle Snort's stomach. And then she rolled over to the grass and hit her face. When Snort tried to push her nose under Kate's thigh, she made a half kick and chased Snort away. Stop it, Snort. Jenny echoed in the same meditative tone. The sisters adored each other and one always came to the other's help. But Snort only stopped a moment to gaze at Jenny, then tucked at Kate's dress. Kate made another more energetic kick and said, Oh, do go away, Snort. Okay, so the sisters were very close to each other. When one was in trouble, the other was always there to help. Even here, Jane immediately came to rescue her sister by chasing Snort away. But Snort did not stop, so Kate gave the dog another strong kick to chase her away. But because Snort did not go away, Jane, oh, sorry, Jenny stopped her lazy walk and started aiming Snort with a bamboo as if it was a spear trying to threaten or chase away the dog. Okay, so here it says Jenny stopped in her languid stroll, snatched the bamboo from the border, and hurled it at Snort like a spear. Okay, the dog must have been very frightened. Let's read on. The bitch startled, uttered a loud uncertain bark, and approached wagging her behind so vigorously that she curled her body sideways at each whack. She was not sure if this was a new game or if she had committed some grave crime. Jenny gave a yell and rushed at her. She fled yelping. At once, Kate jumped up, seized another bamboo and threw it, shouting, Tiger! Tiger! Okay, so I think the dog thinks that they are playing a game. 
So as Jenny aimed at her with a bamboo, the dog became more excited and so she started to give a loud, meaningless bark. She started wagging her tail. The dog did not know if this was a new game or if she had done something wrong. So, uh, not knowing what was going on, she began to, you know, attack them. So they chased the dog around the garden, and for the second time, Kate threw a bamboo at Snort and called, Tiger, Tiger. The two children dashed after the bitch. Here, bitch is a female dog, okay? So they dashed after the dog, laughing, bumping together, falling over each other, and snatching up anything they could find to throw at the fugitive. Pebbles, dead daffodils, bits of flower pots, lumps of earth, anything. Now, snort horrified, overwhelmed, dodged to and fro, barked hysterically, crazy, crazily, wagged her tail in desperate submission, finally put in between her legs and crept whining between a broken shed and the wall. In this paragraph, we can see the girls chasing, laughing, bumping while they chased the dog. They were falling over each other and throwing at the dog anything they found on their way, like stones, dead daffodils, pieces of flower pots, and mud. Now Snort was afraid and excited, so she ran back and forth, and as she barked loudly, and crazily, she wagged her tail, and finally, as if to say, I'm sorry, I surrender, Snort finally cooled down and began to sit down slowly between the broken wall. Robert was shocked. He was fond of the sentimental, foolish Snort, and he saw her acute misery. He called to the children urgently. Hi, Jenny, don't do that. Don't do that, Kate. She's frightened. You might put her eye out. Hi, stop, stop. Okay, remember Mr. Robert Quick was sitting in the garden reading his newspaper. Now, as the girls were attacking this uh, dog, he was watching the entire scene. Now, the game began became so rough that Mr. Robert Quick was disturbed. So Robert, their father, was so shocked to see how wild and merciless his girls had turned out to be. He was feeling sorry for the dog. So he, was, so he shouted and asked the girls to stop what they were doing. He said, don't hurt the dog. She is frightened. This last cry expressed real indignation. Jenny had got hold of a rake and was trying to hook Snort by the collar. Robert began to struggle out of his chair, but suddenly Kate turned round, aimed a pea stick at him, and shouted at the top of her voice, Yield, pale face. Jenny at once turned and cried, Yes, yes, pale face, yield. She burst into a shout of laughter and could not speak but rushed at the man with the rake, carried like a lens. Okay, so from the voice of Mr. Robert Quick, we can make out that he was really annoyed. Jenny was about to tie the dog when her father shouted. Then, Robert tried to get out of her, his chair, but suddenly, seeing her father trying to get out of the chair, Kate turned towards him and tried to throw a pea stick at him and began calling their father pale face. Okay? Uh, then Jenny also did the same and started calling him pale face. Jenny started laughing and ran towards the, their father with a rake, aiming at him like a lens. Okay, here lens is a long pointed rod. So they took a rod and 
aimed at their father as if to, you know, uh, throw at him. The two girls laughed and mocked or made fun of their father. They called him pale face, pale face, kill him, okay, torture him. Now, let's continue reading. The two girls, staggering with laughter, threw themselves upon their father. Pale face, pale face, Robbie, kill him, scalp him, torture him. They tore at the man and suddenly he was frightened. It seemed to him that both the children, usually so gentle, so affectionate, had gone completely mad, vindictive. They were hurting him, and he did not know how to defend himself without hurting them, without breaking their skinny bones, which seemed as fragile as birds' leg as a bird's legs. He dared not even push too hard against the thin ribs which seemed to bend under his hand. He tore at the man. Now, this means they attacked their father. They were strangling, strangling him hard in his neck, and even though it was a game, Mr. Quick was frightened and shocked by their wild behavior. He wanted to defend himself, but he was also afraid that he might break their skinny bones. Snort, suddenly recovering confidence, rushed barking from cover and seized this new victim by the sleeve, grunting and tugging. He remembers Snort was resting near the wall. But seeing these two girls attacking this um, new victim, she also ran towards them and started joining them. Hi, he shouted, trying to catch at the bitch. Call her off, Kate. Don't, don't, children. Okay, so seeing the dog joining them, Mr. Robert Quick tried to stop the dog. She urged Kate and Jenny to stop the dog, but they did not bother. They battered at him. Kate was jumping on his stomach. Jenny had seized him by the collar as if to strangle him. So they did not bother what their father was saying. Kate was jumping on his stomach, and Jenny was holding their father by the collar as if to strangle him. Her face close to his own was that of a homicidal maniac. Her eyes were white and glaring. Her lips were curled back to show all her teeth. And he was really strangling. He made a violent effort to throw the child off, but her hands were firmly twined in his collar. He felt his ears sing. Okay, so here Jenny was holding her father by his collar, as if he was going to strangle him. Now, Mr. Robert Quick expressed uh, what he was seeing. He said the girl's face was so close to him. All her teeth were showing. Her eyes were popping out. Now, she looked like a murderer, he said. Then suddenly the child, sorry, then suddenly the chair gave way. All three fell with the crash. Snort startled and perhaps pinched, gave a yelp and snapped at the man's face. Suddenly, the chair broke. Okay, so all three of them fell with a crash. Now, Snort was so frightened and perhaps uh, she might have been hurt as well. So, by mistake, Snort snapped at Mr. Robert's face. Now, we don't know what happened. We will see this in the next part.